with someone else. And they don't even see it. And I'm sitting out and all of a sudden it just dawned on me. It's like how many times do we run to things and I was sitting in the corner and we ignore him flat. And we are all over the stuff we want. And he's just like, I'm right here. How can you not see me? And my heart broke. It just broke. What about your stuff? What about your kingdom? What about your gifting? All about self. And for the sake of that, we give God a mess. And he sits there in the room. He says, you're not here for me. That video clip I sent out in the group was again a reaffirmation of something that was going on. He said, out of your desperation, you jump up and you just ignore me and you make your own plan. You don't want me for me. You want me to take away your consequence so you can have you. For a fellowship that has a calling like we have, we cannot and must not get stuck in the place where we think our opinions matter more than God's instruction. Because each one of you are being prepared for whatever. Whatever His will is, for His name's sake. He doesn't care if, you know, He's busy making you something beautiful and you're so busy grumbling because you don't want to be that thing, you want to be something else. You don't want to do it that way, you want to do it this way. You don't want to go through the fire, but you want to be refined. I just wish you came out instant coffee. You know instant coffee thinking? No one wants to grow the coffee plant. No one wants to prepare the soil, put the seed, water it, ask God, bring the right amount of rain, the right amount of covering to get it out, then we pick it, then we wait, we dry it out, then we roast it, and then we grind it, and then you can boil your kettle. No, I want coffee now. How many of you struggle with the fact that sometimes you come in here thinking you know what you were talking about and what the chapter was about, realizing you didn't know what you were talking about? <laughs> no way, it happens to me all the time. You get up to teach something and you're like, oh, it's about this, and you start reading it again and you're like, hang on a second, it's not just about that, it's about this. It's about revelation. Yes, it's about Ruth. That's not true. Really, has got a problem with that one time he did it. Um, but it's that process. God is unveiling things all the time. But because you don't see it that way, or they don't see it the way you see it, it's wrong. Really? Do you have the monopoly on God's truth? Last time I checked, I'm still learning loads. And just when I think I know what I'm talking about, even if it's a specific chapter or portion, there are words that pop out there to me and I go, yeah, I didn't see that before. It's called a living word for a reason. Guys, be careful of what you're focusing on. He could not wait for the rest of the spoil, so he grabbed what he could now. I don't know if I'm going to get gold again. How many cities did they conquer and how long did it take? You think Jericho was the biggest and most ornate? No. Chatzor had an upper city and a lower city. And that wasn't even the capital. Make Jericho look small. There was more wealth coming than what they could have understood, but because they could not keep it in check, they made a mistake. He makes an Ishmael. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. It's amazing to to think, you know, if. If we understand the severity of our sin, how much more would we sin? Actually, if we if we knew that we you know if, if we had to do something and then we had to be called out family by family, and we would stand as as the father and see not only our family perish, but then ourselves as well, that would make you wonder who would actually sin. So it's it's a it's a very strong example. Yeah, it's going to get worse, don't worry. <laughs> you will find them hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. So, you're in a little tent. How many of you slept in like a four-man or a six-man tent? Yes. Right, okay, now let's pretend the bed sheet is removable and then you come in, 
with a whole bunch of stuff as the father, and you dig a big hole and your wife's like, what is it? What are you doing? And you're digging, and then I put it in, and then I cover it, and I put the tent mat back over, and everything is smiley face and happy. Was it only him that's it? No. You come back from battle. You just came out of Jericho. The woman is still at that camp. You think that she would have left his side when he came in? Probably not. I don't have any concrete proof, but probably not. Yosha sent messages who ran to the tent. It was all there. Hidden in his tent, including the silver underneath. They took the things from inside the tent, brought them to Yosha and all the people of Israel, and put them down before Adonai. Yoshua, together with all Israel, took Achan and the sons of Zerach with the soul of the robe, the gold witch, and his sons, his daughters, his cattle, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and everything he had, and brought them to Achor Valley. What does the word Achor mean? Hmm? Achor. There's also an interesting translation that is called the Valley of Weeping or the Valley of Softness. Everything is at. What did the poor sheep do to deserve this? I don't know. <laughs> Joshua said, Why have you brought trouble on us today? Adonai will bring trouble on you. Achan and Achan. You see the wordplay? <clears throat> then all Israel stoned him to death. They burnt them to ashes and stoned him. <laughs> Over him they piled a great mound of stones, which is there to this day. Finally, Adonai turned, over his, turned from his fierce anger, and this is why that place is called the Valley of Achor, the Valley of Trouble, the Valley of Weeping, to this day. That doesn't make sense. If, if he says, you guys are going to come out tribe by tribe, all that, I should imagine that, and be back digging it up and running for it, taking his kids and running. Well, isn't it just this wonderful little thing that if you keep quiet, it doesn't exist? How many of you people play ostrich when you know you've done something wrong? <laughs> How many of you run up to leadership and you won't believe what I looked at this, this week? You won't believe what I said? Now, I'm going to be honest. How many of you hide things from those who are in leadership? So you all kept Shabbat perfectly from day one? The man says, don't go to the shops. You say, Vince doesn't know. It's all good. <laughs> but Vince doesn't know won't hurt him. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but it's sad because God was sitting there with you. <coughs> and he's saying, are you keeping my covenant or are you keeping Vince's covenant? Why are you concerned about him and you're not worried about me? What happens in your house is your responsibility. What you bring in is under your watch. Who has to deal with it now? The community has to. Now let's put this into human perspective. You see your son, and your brother, and your cousin, and his entire family. You can put to the sword. They get stoned, they get burnt up, and there's a big pile of money. How many think? How many tears do you think that were shed in that valley that day? How many do you think that, let's put it this way, how many of you think would turn around and say, God is unfair? And they turn around and say, you know, this is ridiculous, how can God expect this of us? While they try to justify what Acham did is okay. But it comes back to the uh, covenant that was originally made with Abraham. And where if the one that breaks that covenant in any way is going to suffer the same penalty as the animal that was slain. Well, that's the funny thing about that covenant in Genesis 15, because Abraham never walks with blood. So you, so you can't, you can't, you, I, I get what you're saying, but you can't use that analogy, because that's actually Christ's responsibility later. Because there were two lights that worked for the furnace and a furnace and a torch, or what seemed like a furnace. And he was saying to Abraham, when your kids mess up, I'm going to take the price. Right? 
that's prophetic about what Messiah came to do. But here we have a thing where the whole community holds him up to God has singled out someone in his family and his sin and he says, you have, you've had all this time to come up and say, I caused the death of 36 people. Oh no, wait, that's, no, 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 let, let me rephrase that. I took some stuff and I'm sorry. Oh, and 36 people died because I didn't listen the first time. See, we want to notify the 36 funerals that we had to have. The 36 families that are gone missing because you couldn't hold back from coveting something, wanting something more. You take from an idolatrous nation, you take from a pagan household and you bring that into God's house and then there's going to be no consequence. He's in the camp with you. He wants to have a relationship with you. What is... That's important, that's why that's happening. What is the purpose here? What's at risk? God leaving the camp. Did I care about myself or did I care about the two and a half million people that will not survive a single day in enemy territory without this God protecting me? But don't worry, it's okay, appease yourself, your sin is fine, it only hurts you. Well, that's what they tell you. It also shows that um, confessing the sin doesn't take away the consequence. Mm -hmm. no, absolutely. That's why he gave you the sacrificial system, because something has to die in your place. But this is intentional. Yeah. You went out against it. You knew that we were not to touch anything. We were not to, and now you bring idolatry. I took you out of an idolatrous place and I brought you to me. Don't get confused between who is God and who's not you. I put you in a position. Let's, let's put it into this way. I, God saves you. He comes up to you and he saves you and he says, look, I'm Yeshua. And then you go, wow, that's amazing. I can get a fresh, clean start. And I'm all excited. And then I become saved. I get mikvah and I come out the other side. And then I use the excuse, well, um, well, you know what? I don't really have a problem with Buddhists. So I, to show them that I'm, I'm God is love, I keep one in my house. And I, I keep the copy of the Quran just, just on the side and a prayer mat there too. But don't, don't, I'm not against you. I'm trying to show you that I'm approachable. So when you pray, who do you pray to? I don't bow down to it. I'm not worshipping it. Okay. If that logic was true, I could take a swastika and put it in a Jewish house and tell him not to be offended. That's how God showed me. My friend didn't tell me, he didn't understand, he says, I'm not worshipping this thing. I said, Abba, I know this is wrong, but how do I explain it to him? And he goes, if you took a swastika and you stuck it on the wall, and a Jewish man came into us and said, don't get offended, I just like the colors. <laughs> you know, that only represented the death of six million of my family. Don't, don't stress about it. You keep your colors. You think you want to come back into my house? Same thing spiritually. How many of God's creation are being led astray by this fake God that they trusted in, that their city is now desolate, dead, it is broken, and many more people are going to die, many more cities are going to go, because instead of leaving, instead of making Teshuvah, they choose war. They come up against Him, and they challenge Him to His face, who is your God? I created you. How can you ask that question? How do you not know who I am? That's like a toddler walking up to his father and saying, Don't you tell me what to do. You never make me. How far do you think you'll get? If I'm a loving dad, oh, that bush is going to burn, eh? <laughs> Why? Because if I don't teach him that there is consequence of the insolence or, in, or coming up against someone of authority, how then is he going to respect any sort of rules from anybody? Yeah. Daddy, you didn't love me enough. Let me do whatever I want, then I get locked up in jail and it's daddy's fault. Partly it is. Because you didn't teach him consequence. He's teaching here. Your son brings death. There is no two ways about this. If you get it wrong, if you are in my camp, if you are the ones that people are looking to, and you get it wrong, I'm going to hold you accountable because you know better. 
Ena večer nov, ne znam. God is not preparing you to go out, to go teach, and to go meet people because you have truth that He's given you, and you think you can mix and match whatever you like. <laughs> you will bring this because you're bringing yourself your way, your understanding, your perception, not God. And people, that's the happy life. May God protect us from it. People will die because of your deception. Because of the things you hid in your tent, in your family, and you just told them, don't worry, guys, don't tell Uncle Vince. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You need to get a handle on the consequences of what is going on under your roof. Because there are people out there fighting battles on your behalf. And if they come back battered and bruised and broken, it's because you didn't listen. Is that getting personal enough for you? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I'm sort of half understanding Joshua 7 verse 25 to 26, but not fully, because Deuteronomy 24 verse 16 talks about, Fathers shall not be put to death for their children sin, nor shall children be put to death for their father's sin. Exactly. A person shall be put to death for his own sin. That's so, what I get, that the whole family was put to death. So the family knew. Oh, oh nice. Yes. Mm. Hi, Paul. Thank you. The family knew. Again, it comes up to us. We sit down and we cover up, we cover each other's backs when we do something wrong. If you really love the person, don't cover them up there. Now, you, you looked at the back, eh? I see you. <laughs> <laughs> you think covering for your friend is going to help you? I promise you, I covered for my friends and they nearly were dead when I got stupid. Yeah. I'm not even playing. You make a bad decision and you think it's okay because you want to show them that you have their back and what happens? They do something worse. Mm -hmm. I didn't even tell your mom, it's fine. It's just in this as an example. No, I'll, I'll tell your mom that you have my place, but you're actually someone else. And that, uh, that day you decide, well, it's a good idea, huh? Because the people you're hanging out with, instead of me telling you to back away from them slowly, oh, well, you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to run into your own walls. You know, it's a funny realization to see people that you went to school with that had a home and an upbringing that was normal to find them sitting on the street begging with a bad addiction. And you stop and you go, hang on a second, I knew you. You were in school with me. How are you on the street corner? Uh, because a friend of a friend took them to a place at one time. Instead of told them to not go there, they went. Instead of told them to not take that stuff, they did. And the person who introduced them to that stuff is fine now. They managed to be recreational users. And the other guys got an addiction so bad that he was homeless. Divorced. And he has a son that was taken away from him that he had no relationship with. Why? Because anything he had, he gave to drugs. But don't worry, we'll cover his back when his mommy asks. Been around long enough to see the fruit of that stuff. Alam, I said to Yahushua, don't be afraid of falling to despair. Take all the people who can fight with you, set out and go up to I. Because now I have handed to you the king of Ai and the people in the city of this land. Do to Ai and its king that you did to Jericho and its king, but this time take its spoil and cattle and booty for yourselves, ambush the city from behind. So don't worry, this time you're going to get spoiled. A Khan can wait a couple of days. In his desperation, he makes Ishmael. Now I, roughly speaking, there's like a valley that runs here, the city is over here, but there's kind of ridges around here. Okay? He says, ambush the city. So what you're going to see is, you're going to see them split up. 
They're going to come and they're going to hide into the ridge, and then you're going to have an army sitting over here. We'll fill in the picture as we go. So Joshua set out for I and all the people who could fight. Joshua chose 30,000 men, the most courageous of his troops, and sent them out by night. He instructed them, you are to lie in wait and ambush the city from behind. Stay close to the city, all of you be ready. I and all the troops with me will approach the city, and when they come out to attack us, as they did before, we will run away from them. They will chase after us until we have drawn them away from the city. Because they will say they are running away from us as they did before. So they will run away from them. So we will run away from them. What is God using here? Oh, he's using tactical, but he's also teaching I. What do you think they are thinking now that they defeated the first onslaught? Our God is bigger than your God. Who can stand before us? Who is mightier than the great I and the God of I? And all of a sudden their arrogance gets so stupid that they decide to leave their castle. Make sure you don't go running ahead when God says sit still. Then you are to jump out from him from your ambush position and take possession of the city. For other night your God has handed it over to you. When you have captured the city, you are to set it on fire. Do according to what Allah has said. Those are your orders. Yosha sent them out, and they went to the place for the ambush, staying between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai, while Yoshua camped that night with the people. Yoshua got up early in the morning, mustered his men, and went to Ai ahead of the people, and he and his, and his leaders of Israel. All the troops marching with him went up, advanced, arrived in front of the city, and camped to the north side of Ai, and with the valley of between him and Ai. Then he took 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. Thus they arrayed themselves with the army to the north of the city, and their rear guard lying to the way to the west of the city. Joshua spent the night in the valley. The king of Ai saw this, so the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to battle against Israel. He and all his people at, at the meeting place facing the Arabah. But he was unaware that behind the city an ambush that had been laid against him. Joshua and all of Israel, made as if they had been defeated before them, ran, from, ran off on the road to the desert. All the people in I summoned together to pursue them, so they chased Joshua and were drawn out from the city. No man was left in I or Bethel who had not gone against Israel pursuing Israel. They left the city wide open. Then Adonai said to Joshua, point your spear out toward your hand toward I, because I will hand it over to you. So lift your spear and point it to something. Remind you of something? Moses. Lifting his staff. Okay, but he was lifting it up towards heaven, right? Joshua pointed the spear in his hand toward the city. The men in ambush jumped up quickly from the place the moment they stretched out his hand and they ran into the city and captured it. And they hurried to set the city on fire. When the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw it. There was smoke from the city rising to the sky and they had no power to flee this way or that. At which point the people who had run off toward the desert turned back on their pursuers. When Yehoshua and Israel saw that the ambush had captured the city, that the smoke of the city was going up, they turned back and slaughtered the men of Ai. While the others came out against the city against them too, so that they were surrounded by Israel, with, with some of, on this side and some on that side, they attacked them, allowing none of them to remain or escape. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Yerushua. Right. So their arrogance was again, was again the downfall. Right? Chased out set the place alight, they realize what's happened, where do we go from here? No way, you're stuck in between two armies. When Israel had finished slaughtering all the inhabitants of Ai in the countryside in the desert where they had pursued them, and they all fallen consumed by the sword, then all Israel returned to Ai and defeated it with the sword. Twelve thousand men and women fell that day, everyone in Ai. For Joshua did not withdraw his hand 
which he had used to point the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. So again, like Moses, he set their spear in hand. Who's fighting the battle? Not your God. You trusted in your stuff? He's gone. Only the livestock and the spoil of the city that Israel take as, as, as bounty for themselves and booty for themselves in keeping with the order Adonai had given Yoshua. So Yoshua burned down I and turned it into a tell forever. An archaeological mount, just rubble. So that it remained a ruin to this day. The king of I hanged on a tree until <coughs> evening at sundown. Yoshua gave the order, so they took the carcass down from the tree, threw it at the entrance of the city gate and piled on it a big heap of stones, which is there to this day. Why oh, would they hang him on a tree? Right, he's cursed. Why is he cursed? Because, well, you could say sin. Remember, these guys weren't exactly kosher, but what else? Right, went up against God. Remember, curse is away from God. And he takes him down, and yet they give him a burial, but it's a standing stone monument here. And that monument is saying, this is what happens when you come up against God. How many more? You've got Jericho, and now you've got I. How many more warning shots do you need before the gun comes up? What is God telling the rest of the nations in Canaan? You should be leaving if you come up against me. There's nothing but ruin. Okay? Don't make like Pharaoh. Then Yahushua built an altar to Adonai, the God of Israel, on Mount Ebal, and as Moshe, the servant of, of Adonai, had ordered the people of Israel to do this, this is written in the book of Torah of Moshe, the altar of uncut stones that no one touched it with an iron rod. On it they offered burnt offerings to Adonai that sacrificed peace offerings. So, he's got burnt offerings. What's a burnt offering in Hebrew? No lay offering. What does a lay mean? What Go up. It's not flexed. And what other offering does he have? Peace. Peace offering. Shalom. Shalmin. Right? So, we have complete dedication. And we have everything is okay, or everything is as it should be. They go to a place called Ebal to do this. Remember, we spoke about this in Hebrew. Ebal and Gerizim. Right. Let me read this quickly, and then we will discuss that. He wrote all the stones a copy of the Torah of Moshe, inscribing it in the presence of the people of Israel. Then the people of Israel, including their leaders, officials, and judges, stood on either side of the ark in front of the Kohanim, who were Levi'im, and who carried the ark of the covenant of Adonai. The foreigners were there along with the citizens. Interesting. Half of the people were in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of the people were in Mount, on front of Mount Ebal. As Moshe the servant of Adonai had ordered them early in connection with blessing the people of Israel. After this, he read all the words of Torah, the blessing and the curse, according to everything written in the book of Torah. There was not a word of everything Moses had ordered that Joshua did not read before all Israel assembled, including the women, the little ones, and the foreigners living with them. Now... How long do you think it would take us to build an altar, inscribe words on the altar, and read Torah? How many of you men in fellowship goes longer than two hours? You're lucky I'm not like Joshua. What's fascinating is the distance between those two houses. Wow, there's some interesting links here. Right. So what we have, not just that, right? We've got a bowling here. See, where is